Hey, how's it going? Just wanted to make a quick video here. Um, I tried looking online for this myself and I couldn't find anything. Um, basically what I was trying to do was put a kicker motor on my boat. Anyway, I have the Ranger 1880 MS. Fish and ski, I guess that's what you would call it. These typically don't come with kicker motors. Um, so I wanted to put one on myself. Uh, so I just wanted to give you guys some of the difficulties that I had in hopes that maybe, you know, it'll be easier for you. Um, basically, these, the, these boats, this boat that I have, again, this is a 2020 uh, 1880 MS. They have some secrets that you probably don't know about and the manufacturer is not going to tell you and the dealer is probably definitely not going to tell you. Um, so I got a quote to get this thing put on was basically $6,000. That's with this Mercury four stroke. It's the 9.9 .9 labor and installation. So <clears throat> the motor itself still, it's, it's hard to find those cheaper three grand that's what I paid for this one but to save myself the other three grand I figured I'd put it on myself um, so that's what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you some of the things that I did uh, again hopefully this makes your life simpler I went through uh, some troubles doing this uh, but anyway here we go so first thing you'll need I bought the Panther adjustable so this is nice, you can loosen these things here, pull this out, it'll drop down, um, and then you can raise it back up, and it's got spring assist. It's got two springs, actually, there's one there, and then there's one tucked up inside where you can't really see. You don't need this, I sort of didn't want it, but it was what was available at the time, because I thought I was gonna go out a lot sooner than I actually did, um, but I would, if I could do it again, I would probably get the static mount. Um, just because they're more rigid, you don't really need this adjustable thing. I got the 25 inch long shaft on this motor, the kicker. Um, it's a command thrust actually, I wanna clarify, it's not a pro kicker, it's a command thrust. But anyway, long shaft, I don't really need the adjustment and you probably won't either if you get the right shaft length. So, um, mounting this i was worried about drilling holes through the transom and you know backing material because if you know this you may know this but these little slots right here that's a cutout it's already pre-cut out you unscrew all those screws and you have access to the back of the transom well trying to think of how to get a backing material in there so by backing material what I mean is you can't just screw this through the transom and then have your washer pulling on the transom there's not enough surface area there so you have to have some backing plate or something in there turns out Ranger knows that a lot of people like me probably are gonna put one of these kickers on it so they already pre-installed them so I I'm not gonna pull this apart to show you, but trust me on this. If you open this up, you can look in here um, and feel in there, and you'll feel a square plate. It's aluminum, it's an aluminum plate. It's not very big. <laughs> That's my first caution to you. That plate is not big. So when you go to lay out your bolt hole pattern, make sure that you're hitting that backer plate. So it's this one it's about six inches tall and it's a i'd say probably 10 inches wide i drilled my first couple holes here it's sort of hard to see excuse me i got this little ledge right here so i had to drill below that ledge to be able to um just not have a gap in here that was awkward so anyway drilled that first hole went down drilled the next hole on these panther brackets um, they want you to use the outermost holes, which I was going to, and I drilled this one right here, and I missed the backer plate. Luckily, I only drilled through with uh, 
I think it was like an eighth inch drill bit, maybe. It was small. So I just put some of this, whatever this white compound stuff is, the dirty 352 or whatever it is. The stuff that sets quick and is pretty permanent. Screw, drilled it in there, and then just covered that little hole up. Moved up, and that's where I bolted, bolted it. So anyway, that was the big point here was that there's a backer plate in there. Um, it should be, anyway. I mean, like I said, look in there to make sure, but I was pleasantly surprised to see it was in there. And you'll know when you hit it too with your drill bit because you'll go through that fiberglass pretty quick. Um, and then once you hit that aluminum, you're, you'll notice drilling that it's a little bit stiffer. So that was the first caution. Make sure you look to see how big that backer plate is. Um, and the other part of that is drilling fiberglass is tricky. Um, it'll splinter on you. And then when you go to screw into it, it'll definitely splinter on you. So just keep that in mind. I don't, I'm not a, an expert on drilling fiberglass or anything like that, but uh, look it up so you don't really damage like your gel coat. So that was the first big thing. The second big thing is that Ranger also knows that people are going to be installing these things uh, and the dealer's probably going to be installing them, so they're trying to hook the dealer up. And what I mean is, I was worried about how do I route the fuel line? Where do I connect it to? Do I got to splice it? Because that's what a guy on the phone at one of the big box stores told me was, hey, you know, it's a pretty simple process. You find the hole in the back of your boat, or they cut them if there isn't one, put the mount on, put the motor on, run the fuel line. And they were talking about splicing. Well, here's a little secret for you. Here, if I open this, this is how I get to my pumps. All right, I'm gonna flip this. It might rotate itself, or it might not. Anyway, I don't know if you can see this or not. This little guy right here, was blanked off okay and this thing and it had a screw in the end of it well turns out my main pickup is over here and this pickup just so happens to be a spare so i got really lucky on that um i don't know if all the ranger boats have that it would make sense to me especially if it's a like the fs like the 621s and stuff if they don't already have kickers on them your fuel tank probably already has a pickup in it. So don't worry about splicing lines unless you don't have that pickup. And in that case, good luck. Um, I think you gotta get a T. Uh, you gotta get the one-way valve, um, maybe even like a selector valve to depend, depending on which uh, motor you're trying to run. The point is if you tee off your main line to your kicker, and you start your big motor and there's no one-way valve going to your kicker you'll sight you'll suck out of your kicker motor and then you'll get air in your fuel system for your big motor so that's the purpose of check valve one-way valve whatever you want to call it so that was a really nice little secret that i found out is that there's already a pickup in this tank so that made it a lot easier so next thing is routing the actual fuel line for me goes over obviously and hooks up to the kicker i got it pushed in right now that's why it's not reaching but it reaches well thinking of how to route this coming from the motor really nowhere to go so i figured well go through here this is this nice little boot here well i took the end of that actually what i did was i reached up underneath here and i pulled this end up through and then i pulled this primer bulb up through now it's not easy it's hard because that thing compresses but it doesn't compress a lot and there's not here so anyway pulled it up through got this primer bulb to smush enough to be able to do that made sure the connections were all still good and after i pulled it up through um so that's how you route the fuel line again i was gonna pay someone three grand to do all this and i'm really glad i didn't Unfortunately, I didn't have anyone telling me how to do it, and I just sort of figured it out myself, so that's why I'm trying to help you with this. 
Uh, so the last part, really, since I got the I got the command thrust with electric start, um, it's got this battery cable right here that runs down. Well, runs supposed to run your battery, and I was trying to figure out how to route that. Again, this is pretty boat specific for my boat, but just an idea of how these boats are set up. Again, so I ran it from the motor. I had a, the um, ladder here. The ladder there was over there, so I had to relocate my ladder. Typically they install these on the port side and I thought there was something special to doing that. And so I just went ahead and did it. Um, but there's really not because it turns out on this side right here, you open this up. There's another one of those cutouts and they seal it with the plastic or whatever. So again, to get down into here, take the six screws out, open it up. Well, what's nice about this is I brought my battery cable through that same boot down and through here. And then all up under here is open. It's all open and it goes into, sorry, it goes right into my battery compartment. So I just snuck those wires. Like I said, this is all open up in here. Snuck those wires right through, connected them. And now I can electric start it. I'm heading out tomorrow. So it'll be the first time actually trolling. I'm gonna try to catch some fish, hopefully. Um, the trolling motor was a big part of that. You know, running those big motors at trolling speed isn't great for them. So that's why I got the little motor. Uh, I hope this video helps somebody. Uh, if you have questions, just post them down below and I'll try to answer them. I'm not an expert in any of this. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, obviously take it to your dealer. The other reason I didn't take it to the dealer was it was going to be anywhere between four to six weeks. Um, I'm talking in March. So early in the season, it was four to six weeks. These motors, for some reason, they're hard to find. I got this from Power Equipment Direct, if you haven't heard of them. I mean, just I found it off a simple Google search. They sent it within. I I could have got it on a Friday, and I wasn't going to be home that day, so they sent it to me on a Monday. So it was like five days, if that. Uh, package brought right to my house. I had an appliance installed. He picked it up, took it in the house. Easy. Uh. Anyway, rambling. Again, just wanted to make a quick video, letting you guys know my difficulties. Uh, and if you have problems, like I said, just leave a comment below. I'll try to answer it. I'll be out on this a lot, most likely. Uh, and, yeah, have a good one.